Well, hello. Today we're going to be visiting with Didi for a while. And Didi's one of our Optimal EFT course members. And uh, she's getting started in all of this. And she has some issues that I think would be useful for many people listening in. This is a very, although to her it doesn't seem very common, I see it as a very common issue with things that will unfold for you as we go along. We're going to be getting a good start here. This is not the kind of thing that we handle all in one session, because as you will see, there's lots of pieces to it and everything else. But she has graciously allowed us to record this. And so with big gratitude, let me bring let me bring her on. Hello, Dee Dee. Hi, Gary. <laughs> Say hello. Say hello. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Hi. Okay. Okay, so you and I, you and I talked about some things. Uh, this was a while back, and also on recently before we did this recording. And you were talking about the main issues being well. You somehow really you can't move forward. You've got a lot of fears, like fear of dying and fear of cancer, and sleep is something that's hard to come by, and all of that. I, I mentioned that, did I not? Or did we not talk about that? Yes, we did. We talked about all that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, you also said, but I didn't get a list from you. You told me that that uh, you had a number of physical issues. Can you list some of those for me? Um, well, uh, insomnia is probably the worst. Okay. And um, I had panic attacks years ago. Those have some, have really gone away, but I still have the heart palpitations. So when I wake up, they're better now, but typically over the last year, I was afraid to go to bed at night because I always, I wake up and when, as soon as my eyes open, I have the, just this okay. heart palpitation. So that would be, those two are the worst. But I have a, a clogged tear duct that had surgery. Now I have it over here. And then I have blockage in the nose, a um, deviated septum. So everything seems to be pretty localized in my face. And then the anxiety. And it just kind of uh, snowballs because it, if it's not one thing, it jumps to another, jumps to another physical problem. There's so many more. I have so many more. But I, those are few. <laughs> well, Okay, but let me, we may want to get into more as we go on, but for the moment, the heart palpitations, they only exist when you wake up in the morning. Are they there now, for example? A little bit right now. It's very random. Um, when it happened, it, it was just, it was mostly used to be just when I woke up in the middle of the night, usually two or three in the morning. Sure. Not when I wake up at eight or nine, but if I wake up in the middle of the night, and it, it felt like, it kind of felt like an attack. It kind of feels uh, very dark. Yeah. And, um, now I'll get them randomly, sometimes even during the day, like I actually had them this morning while I was in church, which always surprises me <laughs> to have an in okay. church where I, where I usually feel the most peaceful. Well, um, this morning in church, sorry to interrupt you for a second, but but were they, you know, like you said before, like this up to you know, like, like a 10 or, or were they like a five or? Um, I would say probably a five or six. Okay. And, and then what happens is my mind goes a little, uh, starts to over, do overtime. And then I'm already planning on how to get out. So then my mind's already going, okay, if it gets really bad, which door are you going to run to? Yeah. Because I know okay. I, have to, I have to get out. Okay. Well, right now, I would think, I'm guessing, okay, I would think you would have some heart palpitations because you would have some nervousness talking to me and all these all these issues and, and other people are listening in and so on. Uh, but there, there's, you say there's a little bit, but not much? Yeah, it's there. It's a nervousness to talk to be talking to you about it. Um, so let me feel it. It's 
it's it's a little bit, but it's not a panic feeling of running type of thing. It's just okay. more probably just because we're doing this, maybe. Yeah. But it's not the same feeling. It's not the same okay. feeling as what number wise it's a one or two or you're are you saying that probably a two or two or three maybe two probably two or three yeah okay Make it's it just there if there's something yeah. there it's not bad but there's something there all right and the the clogging in your nasal area on a scale of zero to ten how clogged is it right now well, I don't notice it too much during the day, but if I, when I go to sleep, I, I was waking up um, the last six months. I was this is this is a new thing. I wake it, I would wake up, and I almost like a, a like a choking kind of like <gasps> like that, and I and, and I was like, oh, yeah. what is what's that? And that was happening. So went to the doctor. They think I possibly have sleep apnea. But they thought that's kind of weird because you don't fit the profile of that. Yeah. You don't fit the profile of that. But um, I think it's the blockage in my nose because my nasal passages are narrowing. Well, do you breathe easily and freely now or, or is it obstructed in some fashion at the moment? It's not obstructed. It just, um, I never seem to be able to get enough air in. Like for me to do deep breathing, I have to be really relaxed. I don't, I, I, I hold my, I realized the last year or so that I've probably held my breath most of my life. I know that sounds probably pretty strange, but I, I, I've held my breath and didn't even know it. I'm like, oh gosh, I'm not breathing. Now I'm into a lot more that I realize that and I pay attention to it, but. Okay. Well, that's an important con to me. That's an important comment. If you felt like you've been holding your breath most of your life, there's an emotional cause for that. Okay, we may not know exactly what it is yet, but there's a there's a cause for that. You're doing something. You're you're trying to ward off something. You're trying to whatever. I I don't know what it is yet. Okay, but that's a sign of some kind of emotional unrest showing up in your breathing. Does that seem accurate to you? It does. Yep. Okay. All right. So you were also telling me earlier before we recorded that during your childhood, it wasn't physically or sexually abusive like some may have, but there was a lot of, what was the term you used? You were ignored uh, a lot. Did I say yeah. it right? Yeah. There were six kids and, um, uh. I have no memory of mothering at all. Okay. So yeah. Six kids, but we didn't really, we, uh, there was no, um, giving your opinion or you were kind of just lost in the crowd. You know, yeah. I, don't, I, I don't have any, I don't, I have one memory of my mom and I was older. I was in high school. I mean, I, I, I don't, she just kind of was non-existent. Okay. Something like, although you didn't use the term, but something like you're invisible, would that be a good term? Um, yeah, probably more dismissive, maybe. Okay. Um, um, we were kind of left on our own because my dad All was right. gone, today, you know, so we were kind of left on our own. All right. Now. Let me tell you where I'm inclined to go, but but I don't want to go there unless you think we're opening the right door. Okay. Okay. So let me just let me just ramble on for a moment or two, um, and tell you where I think we would go, and then you, because we may want to do something else depending on your feedback. But I see so often, Dee Dee, um, that. Young children, all of us, me, you, anybody listening, and everybody, okay, has this large need to seek and get love. Love is a very important thing to all of us. We grow up in various families. Some families, parents, are really quite good at the love 
the love love thing okay others are not at all and i gather you're from one of those that where the love thing wasn't really demonstrated much correct yes yeah yes okay now what's important here is not so much what somebody like parents and siblings and so on did or didn't do in the way of love or anything else this is really important. You know, we need to underline this one. Okay, it's your response to it. What does that mean to you? And even more specifically, what does that mean to you about you? Does it mean like I'm not good enough? I don't count. I'm not lovable. Something's wrong with me. How am I doing? All of the above. <laughs> All of the above. Okay. Yeah. So if your response to all of that are those things and things like that, um, that kicks around in your system. It becomes a belief about you that you carry around about yourself. Okay. I think when we talked before, some months ago, our original conversation, I had you repeat to me a number of sentences to test some of these things, did I? Yes. Okay. Let's do that again just for the moment, okay? Close your eyes for me. Close your eyes. But no, I'm, I'm sorry. You need not close your eyes for this. I, I made a mistake. I'm going to give you a sentence or two to say. Say it out loud and tell me on a scale of zero to ten. How true does it feel? Okay. Uh, we, we, we don't want your logical response. It's your emotional response we're looking for. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm not good enough. Say that sentence. I'm not good enough. Okay. How, zero to 10, how true does that feel? 10 is, ooh, that's really true. And zero is, uh, no. Emotionally, um, eight. Okay. Eight and my heart's pounding. Okay. Your heart starts to pound when you say that. Yes. All right. Pounds to, to a what to what extent? A number number wise. Like a four or five. Five. All right. See that's a big clue. That's a that's a really important clue because you now have a physical response to an emotional issue, right? Right. Okay. Yeah. That also gives us the clue that your insomnia and other physical issues, most likely, and I'm even though you've had operations, I'm thinking even the nasal sinus thing um, is a candidate here too. All right. uh, that's a clue that emotional responses cause physical things. Right. Yeah. Clue. Okay. Now. Another sentence. I don't count. I don't count. Hmm. Probably a two. The heart rate went down. All right. Another sentence. I'm not lovable. Should I guess a 10? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not lovable. Yeah. All right. It's hard to say. I got it. That's why we're <laughs> that's where we're talking about it. Okay. Because we yeah. want to zero we, we want to zero in on what's the real issue here. That's the point. Okay. And it we takes us a little while to do that. Well, yeah. we're looking around at other things too. We're eventually going to bring an unseen therapist. But what we want to do is to start discussing all these things i call them reframes and that kind of stuff but we want to put as much on the table for unseen therapist as we can so when we finally get to her ah we have more on the table more that she can deal with more that she can relieve you of okay and i'm, I'm also reminding you again this is a 
good start session. And you're going to get a copy of this recording so you can you can go over it and so on. You'll be able to use the, the techniques from our advanced course that you're a member of and start using it in this more efficient manner. Okay. Yeah, great. Now, I got one more, I got one more sentence for you, okay? Okay. I'm all alone. Wait a minute. No, no. I'm going to say it differently. I'm all alone and nobody cares. I'm all alone and nobody cares. Um, seven. <clears throat> and I felt okay. angry. <laughs> it oh, went from okay. to anger. All right. Good, good. Oh, excellent feedback. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Angry at what? Um, my parents. All right. Because they should have given you more love, because they should have behaved differently, because why? Because I wouldn't be feeling like this today had I, had I not gone through my childhood with no love. Okay. Stated differently and always correct me. Okay. Always correct me because I don't, I don't want to impose words on you, but um, I wouldn't be like this. If you learned, if you had learned how to love me. No. All right. Say it your way. I wouldn't. I wouldn't feel less than today had I gotten, had I received love from you. Okay. Got it. All right. Okay. That, that's important. Now, one of the things we, I want to explore with you before we bring an unseen therapist seems important to me is that we want to, we want to do something with this anger okay? because the anger and related things to me can be expensive. They can be costing you. Okay. Because I'm seeing it, but you always correct me that that is you with justification. Got it. Blaming your parents for the problem. I'm on target. Well, not really. I, okay. I, I know I said them. I, t I usually take blame for everything. Like even if somebody else does something, I seem to always turn it around that, well, they only did that because I did this. I have a tendency mm -hmm. to blame myself more than other people. Yes. So, so um, I'm just saying I, I don't feel like I have anger for them today. I might be kidding myself, but um, – like I have done forgiveness and I understand it. They did the best they could. And I really do believe that, but it doesn't change the fact that that was my childhood. And now I have to deal with it today to fix, to fix it because I was, Yeah. but I don't, I'm not saying you did this. And I, I know I'm, I'm the only one that can change this. I, I don't, I, I don't think I'm living there where, you know, okay. blaming them for who I am today. Well, Okay, but you you did say as a result of one of the th things I asked you to say, I'm all alone and nobody cares. You did say you were angry at your parents. Those are words you used, okay? Yes. So so where is the anger if it wasn't like we like I had thought? Um, angry I guess I guess angry that I didn't have the loving mother. You know, the mother that's, oh, sweetheart, or, hey, how'd your day go today? Or, or like, you know, we are, who, I, I'll speak for myself. I am who I am today from the result of what I got when I was younger. And, or, what, or what you didn't get. Or what I, yes, or what I didn't get. So it's more like, damn it, I didn't get, I didn't get the mom I wished I had got. I wished I'd gotten a loving mom. Or I wished I'd gotten a father that didn't do that. But it, yeah. So, so the anger's turned into, it's inward, Gary. The anger's at myself. 
Oh, okay. I know. Does that make sense? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, I want to make sure we're talking about we're talking about the same thing. We're on the same page, yeah. so that's why we have to explore some of these things and make sure our our language so, matches up. Okay. I have a question for you. So uh -huh. if if I I did say that, so would you say that I am really anger angry with them, but I'm not so maybe my my belief is like, oh, you're not supposed to be angry with them. Is that a possibility? Yeah, that and we're, yeah, and we're exploring that. That's what we're exploring. Don't have those answers yet. We're still exploring. Okay. All right. So, you said earlier that you had done some forgiveness. You you under important word that I like to hear a lot is you understand uh, where they're coming from. Um, that doesn't mean we excuse the behavior, but we can understand where they're coming from. Now, I've forgotten. We may have discussed this in a, in a previous discussion. But your father, your mother, as far as you know, did they come from abusive backgrounds, neglectful backgrounds? Do you know? My mom's, my mom's mother died when she was six. Um, and her grandmother raised her with her other two sisters. Okay. I don't have a lot of, they come from a place that all three of them had a lot of, I think that, that they possibly had sexual abuse, but they were all three so weird and so strange. They won't talk about anything, not allowed to talk about anything. So we don't, we know very little. Like the cousins, okay. we, we, we know very little because the information we got is everything was just great. Same with my dad's yeah. side. Have both had great childhoods. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. But you don't believe it? No. Okay. <laughs> well, we don't, so we don't really know what happened, but just based on the behavior that I'm hearing anyway, this is reflective of, for whatever the reason, parents who don't know how to give you love. Right. Would I be saying that right? Yes. They haven't really experienced much of it themselves and so don't know how to put it out. You can't give what you don't have kind of idea. Yep. You're not in your you're not in your head. Is that is that a big 10? Yes, I agree or That's a big, it's a big 10. It's a big ten. Okay. I totally agree. Mm -hmm. All right. So academically, at least, we can sit back and say, well, you know, they had some problems and it's not only not really your fault. They just didn't know how to love. And I mean, we can say that and probably be accurate academically. Yes. Yes. Okay. The problem is you, you have an emotional response that's different. An emotional response is I'm all alone and nobody cares. I'm not lovable. I'm not good enough, and so on, right? Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to shift a little bit more because we're still exploring all of this, okay? We're putting as much on the table as we can for unseen therapists. So by the time we get there, there's less under the table, and it's going to be on top of the table. There's more willingness to let it go, more understanding of it, and so on. All right. So this is the question I ask a lot, D.D., I understand your emotional response to these things, but now let me shift the table for the moment on these various questions. And let me ask you, are they logically true? For example, I'm not lovable. Is that logically true? No. How do you know that? Um... Good question. Uh, well, it's a re, it's well, a refer, it's a re, for those listening in, by the way, and for you as as you as a student, it's a reframing question because the answer to that is going to tell us something about whether the emotional thought about I'm not lovable is really valid. Okay, but go ahead. Um. Can you ask me again? Yeah. 
Let's just take the I'm not lovable piece. Logically speaking, is it true that you're not lovable? And you told me, no, it wasn't really true. Okay. And then I asked you, well, why do you say that? Another way to say that is, do you have friends? You know, I, I, Right. It's just the self, it's the self, um, self-loathing is a strong word. It's not, but it's the self, um, unloving myself, I think that has that response to it. Like, of course I'm lovable. Like I, everybody's lovable in some respect. I, I believe that everybody's lovable. So I have to be lovable because I'm, I'm everybody else. I, I'm not going to be the exception to everybody else can be lovable, but I can't be. Okay. So, so, well, do you have friends? Yes. And to your friends, are you lovable? Well, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you have congenial conversations and whatever you do with friends and, yes. and so on. But I have a pretty strong personality. So you have a I, you have wait. I'm sorry. You have a strong what? Personality. Oh, personality. Uh huh. So I seem to push a lot, like I um, somewhat forceful, and then I judge myself on it. So then I think, well, this person's this person probably thinks this and this about me. And I'm always I'm always thinking what they're thinking about me. Like, yeah. Okay. They probably think I'm that, or I probably think I'm that. I waste a lot of time on that. And you have no idea what they're really thinking. No, and I'm usually wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a little reframe in and of itself, is it not? <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> if you listen to your own words, you're spending a lot of time on something you're probably wrong about. And, oh, yeah. yeah. And, and you're beating yourself up about, about nothing is what you're basically yeah. saying to me. And it's constant chatter. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. All that... Because at an emotional level, now don't just agree with me unless I'm correct, okay? At an emotional level, there's something wrong with you. You're not good enough. You're not lovable. And so you're seeing the world through those emotional lenses. That's a question. Uh, I, yes, I, I, yes. I mean, I don't. I would say that's probably true. Okay. All right. All right. Now let me let me look back here at my list here a second. Yeah, da, 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 can da, I da, can da. I can I bring up another symptom that that that's been affecting me since we've been talking? Sure. Um, very dizzy. You are dizzy at the moment. Yes. Eight dizzy, four dizzy? Um, close to eight, seven, eight, yeah. But that's that's that Meniere's disease that there, that's possibly I have from many years ago. Um, first time I got this, it was I was probably in my twenties, and it's and I it goes away for a long, long time, and then comes back like gangbusters, and the dizziness came back. About a week ago, and I just got it again right now. All right, all right. Um, well, let, let me do a little aside here for a moment because I think it's it's useful. Meniere's disease, and I'm not a doctor, okay? Because if I were speaking with a doctor with all their training about Meniere's disease, I I would I would I would be wiped out of the conversation quickly because I'm not familiar with all those terms, okay? have a much, much different approach. Now, Meniere's disease has a cause. Every other disease has a cause. And if you look at all the medical websites, and this you'll find in my book, by the way, The Unseen Therapist. Um, and for those who haven't read the book, you'll find it in the essential links underneath this video. Um, the medical profession does not know what causes Meniere's disease uh, and they admit it I mean they, they you know look at WebMD and all these other places for all these diseases and they over and over and over again they say well nobody knows what causes this disease that disease another disease another disease okay right. 
But we'll look at the symptoms and so we have a drug for this and we have a thing for that and whatever. But they're aiming at the symptoms, not the cause. Okay. So when you tell me you have many years disease and it comes and goes or whatever, I don't put it in the same box a doctor does. Doesn't make me right, just so we understand where, where I'm coming from. There's an emotional cause for that. You get dizzy because there's emotional stuff that's unresolved going on. Yes. Okay. So that's just where I'm coming from. All right, just, just so you know. So chances are something we've been talking about here made you dizzy, okay? We've been talking about emotional stuff. I'm not good enough. I'm not lovable and so on. And as a result, you're getting dizzy. Am I seeing it right? Well, it, I never really know what it is. You're just like in church today. It, it, it randomly hits me. Mm -hmm. And okay. sometimes it's so bad that it, I, it feels like I'm walking around um, drunk. I, and I've learned to live with it. Because, yeah. you know, and it, it runs in the family. My cousin was so debilitated by it, he had to quit his job. He couldn't get out of bed. His was so bad. Okay. All right. I, I, I'm curious. I'm curious about it. Right now, I think you said your dizziness was an eight at the moment. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does that, if you stood up and walked around your chair, would you get more dizzy? Probably, probably not more dizzy, but if I get up, I might be like, whoa. Okay. You know, I, I feel it. I just want to try something. Uh, I have no idea whether it's going to be effective or not. But I'm going to, I personally am going to aim at your symptom surrogately. I just want to see what happens. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to be quiet for, I don't know, better part of a minute maybe. Uh, and I am going to imagine being you because if you read my book and all that, I am you. We are all one. We're not separate as it appears. Okay. And I'm going to bring an unseen therapist on your behalf and see what happens with the dizziness. I don't know if it's going to go away, get better, get worse. I don't, I, I don't know. But I want to see what happens. Are you okay with this? Yes. All right. See you, see you in less than a minute. Okay. And by the way, all you have to do is just play music in your head or something. You, know, you don't have to participate at all. Good. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, check it out. Is the dizziness still an eight? It's a little less, tiny bit, maybe a seven. Okay. It's a little bit me, less than an eight. All right, let me try it again. Okay, hold on. Oh, let me stop a second. Where do you feel the dizziness? I assume your head, but is it someplace else? It's just my head. Okay. All right. All right. Okay, still a seven? Yeah. All right. Let me try once more. Hold on.
All right, still a seven? No. Let me move the move. What, what would you estimate? Um, five. Five, and my heart rate went down. All right. Went down to normal or just went down? Normal. All right. All right, let me, we're on a mini, a mini roll here. So let me do it again, this okay? This is All right, good. hold on. All right, hold on. Let me, st let me stop a second. I'm somehow seeing a s sort of resistance, uh, metaphorically like, a, like, like a, a wall, a brick wall, sort of like, don't go there. I, I I don't want you to go there. Kind of thing. Are you Are you aware of that? Yes. All right. Well, oh, I think oh. I said something like that in that in the email to you. As I've been going through your book and the process, once I joined, I get that wall also. I get the wall where I go um, um, blank, and I can't move forward. I get the wall. All right. We're experimenting here, okay? I want to. I want to bring you into this. We're going to bring unseen therapists in. We're not going to aim at a specific event, which we usually do. We're going to aim at the wall, for the moment, okay? And let's just see what happens, okay? So, yeah. so just, so just close your eyes. Close your eyes. Take a nice, deep, relaxing breath. And just as a simple way of inviting unseen therapists, just. Recall a loving moment and just nod your head whenever you've done that. My God, that's just an invitation. So f let's make a focus now at this wall, okay? And let's understand that it's an imaginary wall. It's not a real wall, but it just seems like a real wall. It seems like a brick wall. It seems like you can't get through it and that kind of thing. And let's let, under, let's let unseen therapists see your wall. Let her stand beside you. The two of you look at the wall. And she counsels with you. She says, well, okay. It's a wall. I don't see the wall you see. I see beauty. I see transparency. But you don't. You don't see transparency. You see a wall. Can't go there. It's as though perhaps something's on the other side of the wall that you don't want to address, see, get in touch with, etc. Let me stop there. Dee, Dee does, it, does that seem correct to you? There's something on the other side of the wall that you don't want to address that is frightening, scary, something like that? I don't have a... Um... That that's not what the blockage is because I don't have a fear of what it, it of addressing what's there. That's the confusing thing about the wall because it's not like oh I don't want to find that out. I don't have that sense. It's just more I know there's a wall. Something's blocking me, but I don't know what it is, and it doesn't seem like. It almost feels. evil okay all right not, not not so much scary but um more sinister something sinister perhaps about you no almost like an like a outside of me something okay. else is, is saying no 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 you're not going right. to be happy you're not going to be happy Nope. No, no, not for you. Okay. All right. Close the eyes. We're going to go back. All right. So unseen therapist now, instead of standing beside you, blends within you, because that's where she is anyway. 
she blends within you. We just don't recognize her. We tend to think that she's out there someplace, but in fact, she's in here. So as best you can, imagine her being in here and she is looking through your eyes. She is allowing you to see this wall through her eyes rather than yours. May take a few moments to do this, you know, maybe a challenge or two, because you're not used to it. But look at the wall through her eyes and in your imagination, see if you can't make this brick wall begin to shift in nature. Instead of being brick, it's made of wood. You still can't see through it, but you could, it's easier to break through a wooden wall than it is a brick wall. And you still don't know what's on the other side, evil or otherwise. And then as you look, imagine the wall shifting and changing to cardboard. Something you probably could crash through if you wanted to, but you can't see through it. And then gradually, at your own pace, let that cardboard wall turn to cellophane. Cellophane strong enough to keep whatever's on the other side of it there, okay, insulated from you. But you can also see it, maybe dimly, maybe only a, th a thought. Maybe you see a specific event. Maybe you see a person. Maybe you see something ominous out there that mm, you don't want to get to. Now, just spend a few moments with that. If you find something, great, let's talk about it. If you don't, we'll talk about that. Okay, so take a moment. Do whatever you can do. And then open your eyes when you're done. I was able to, first I couldn't get past the brick wall, but then I was able to see the fence. It was a white fence and I could see the, the cardboard. And then when we got to the cellophane, it was a gut thinner. It was almost like a red screen. It was like, it was like a deep red, burgundy type deep red kind of mixed with black and it just stayed this kind of kind of fainting going red is black all mixed together and that's that's all i got all right close your eyes we'll go back in all right okay so there we are we see the cellophane but it's a red screen with maybe some black in there and tell me I'm going to suggest something to you, but with your eyes still closed, Dee Dee, I'm going to suggest that you, with unseen therapist's help, walk through that cellophane, that red, black, cellophane, wallish thing. Walk through it and tell me on a scale of zero to ten what resistance you may have to that. Yeah, don't really want to walk through it. Um, kind of stuck right there. Don't really want to walk through. It's All kind right. of it's it's kind of not flat. It's kind of moving a little bit, and I just it wasn't like okay, I'll just go right through it. It wasn't. Yeah, got right it. There. Okay, if you can give me a. a number for the resistance is it a six or a ten um, um probably a five it didn't it didn't feel as evil okay but it was yeah i didn't get that feeling again and my heart rate's not elevated all right okay all right close the eyes again 
going to rise again. And this time, rather than being a piece of cellophane that's red or black that we have some five resistance to going through, in your imagination, make it a cloud. A cloud. You can't see the other side of the cloud. The cloud's in front of you. It's maybe 10 feet deep. Okay. If you were to walk all the way through it, you'd have to walk forward 10 feet to get all the way through it. And it's a it's a dark cloud. And it has a label on the front of it. Do not trespass evil on the other side. I think that's what it says. All right. And the small print says, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's not evil. It may be a lot of fun. But anyway, we're going to put this sign up because we don't want you to go here. That's the small print underneath it. All right. With a smile, a smiley face underneath. Okay. But still a dark cloud. So as unseen therapists, the two of you walk towards the cloud. And for, so easy at first, because when you first come to a cloud, it's just nothing but a nice, cool mist on your cheeks. That's all there is. It's just, that's all it is. It's a cloud. It's not hard to walk through. It's easy to walk through. Just walk through it. You know? As you walk through it, the whole 10 feet of it, with unseen therapists, just notice in your imagination how the darkness and the label on the front seems to pixelate, seems to fade. It's becoming the white of a nice billowy cloud. Perhaps seems more comforting, less threatening. It's only a cloud. And you walk through more and more. And I'd like to have you now, if you would, Dee Dee, do this on your own with unseen therapist help. Walk through the cloud if you can. And if you can't, just tell me. Okay. And if you get to the other side, just tell me what's there, if anything. Um, I didn't really, I was able to walk through it, but I couldn't, I couldn't get the sense or feeling f from the unseen therapist. I, I felt alone. It was like, I was still doing it, but I, I didn't have any connection at all to the unseen therapist. Like well, I, I, maybe I'm not supposed to sense her, but well, I didn't feel that. Okay. That's an error that most people that first come to the unseen therapist make. And that is they somehow think they need to feel something magnificent in her presence. Warm fuzzies, uh, uh, angels and harps and things like that. No, no. Some people will get something like that sometimes. Yes. Okay. But I don't get that myself. You know, I'm so, the teacher here. Okay. But go ahead. So Gary, when you say invite the therapist, in your mind are you saying I invite you? Like do you are you saying anything or is it just a knowledge that okay, this this unseen therapist is here now? It's as simple when as you, that. It, it's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. Think of it this way. The unseen therapist is always, always, always guiding you. And me. We aren't listening. That's the problem. Okay. So when we invite unseen therapists, all we're really saying is we're listening. Okay. Now, in this case, and you can correct me if you don't think I'm correct. Okay. But the way I see it is you're walking now through this cloud. You get clear to the other side of it and you're able to do it. You're able to get to the other side 
you may or may not see what's there, but you got through it. And that's that's a clue that unseen therapist was there helping you do that. Mm. Now, am I putting words in your mouth? Well, I didn't look at it that way, but that's true. Okay. You know, I, I got, I, before there was complete blockage, I was able to get, I, it's not like I got through the cloud and out the other side. I kind of stayed in the cloud, almost out, but at least I got there. Okay. Right? Well, yeah. And you got there and you still feel all alone. Yes. Okay. All right. But you got there. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Um, Another way to look at it is this. If you have a headache, you might want to take an aspirin for it. So you take the aspirin. And the way you know the aspirin worked is if your headache is better after a while. Okay, That's how you know. You didn't get bells and whistles and Hollywood moments or anything like that. You just swallowed the aspirin and you waited and see what the result was. Well, similar thing here. Okay. Let's do it again. You do it a little bit differently. Okay. There's the cloud. The dark cloud, the label, the all that you move, mist on your forehead. Close your eyes if you would. Okay, I, I mean mist on your face and so on. But now, as you're walking through the cloud, and I'm going to repeat something for you. I'm going to be the unseen therapist and repeat some words as you comfortably walk through the cloud. And the words are: You may feel alone, Dee Dee. But I am here. You're not alone. I love you. Your parents may not have been able to exhibit that love. Because they're doing what everyone else is doing, just like you. You're looking for love outside of yourself. Everyone's doing it. They're trying to get love from you. I love you. Keep going. Keep walking. You're not alone. You thought you were alone all these years. You're not alone. I am here. You just haven't been listening. I love you. Can you really hear that? I know it may be strange and maybe you've resisted a little bit or something, but get used to it. I love you. I mean, I really love you. I see things in you that you just resist. I see things in you that you have that you have resisted for years. I ignore them. I love you. I really love you. I cherish the ground you walk on. Oh, nobody else ever does that. That's because you're not looking inside for love. You're not generating love inside, which is what I am, the unseen therapist. You're trying to get it from outside. You're trying to get it from people who don't even know how know what it is to give to you, like your parents. I love you. Oh, I think we should have every day a party for you. We should have every day should be DD Appreciation Day. Mm-hmm. I love you. I absolutely love you. Spend some time with that DD. Open your eyes and tell me where you are. That was amazing. <laughs> it was okay. just so, it was so nice to hear. Yeah, I was very peaceful. I was able to, I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't have any resistance to it. How's your dizzy? How's your dizziness? It's better. Yeah, it's, um, I, I, when I was in the cloud, as we were talking before we did this, it had raised up again. It had gone back up to an eight, the dizziness. Uh huh. But now that we've done this after that, it's probably now a more a four. More a four. Because it, okay. it had ramped up quite a bit right before we did this last session. As we were, right. It just kept, just kept raising up to the eight. And I just let it be. I didn't say anything to you. And then we did this and it went down. Okay. And the heart beating? Normal. Totally normal. Okay. All right. Um, 
I didn't ask you what level of anxiety you were at when we first started, but is that oh, still there? Has it improved? What? I could tell you because I am so in tune to my anxiety. I'd say it was probably an eight when we when we first started. Uh huh. And right now, um, I don't really feel any anxiety right now. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Well, the essence of what we did, at least from my viewpoint, okay, and again, it's, it's your viewpoint that counts, not mine. Okay. Yeah. But from my from my viewpoint, what we did was an effort, and you were receptive to it. For you to receive love, for you to actually be open to it, because because see when I'm doing that, if you're resisting it, uh, uh, a a possible response of yours would be, oh, get over it. You know I'm not lovable. I you know I can't. No, no, I resist it. I don't want to take it in, uh, or start dwelling on you know why that's not right, <laughs> and stuff like that. But I'm gathering you didn't do any of that. No, and I couldn't get enough. You could have kept going on and on. Okay. It, it was. It, I received it definitely. All right. Well, that's what we call the. I have a metaphor for. It. We call it the love sponge. Are, are you familiar with it? <laughs> no. Well, since we're making progress there, let's bring an unseen therapist on that because the core issue here, even though we can go to lots of specific events, and you and you'll need to do that as well. Okay. Um, and start collapsing things, but we want to see if we can't knock the center out of it so the rest of your work can be easier. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead, close the eyes again. We're, we're inviting unseen therapist, she's, all, she's already here. Okay, and let's um, let's put your parents in front of you. Let me ask you, I've forgotten now, are they living? My mom is. Okay. Well, put them both as they, assuming they're alive, in front of you, just in your imagination. There they are. There they are. And you'll notice them. Uh, they're not good at giving love. They have kind of blank, maybe even critical face uh, uh, faces. But they're simply not very good at giving you love. They don't know how to at all. And you will see within them a dry love sponge. Love sponge is like a water sponge. You know, it fills up with water and then it overflows and, and so on. Only this sponge accepts love, not water. And it can fill up and fill up in love. And then you can share that and radiate it and all this to other people. But their love sponge is dry. And while you're looking at that with the dry love sponges within each of your parents, you notice within you, your own love sponge needs help. We may have filled it up a little bit here just recently, but you're all alone. I'm not lovable. That's how we started all of this. And so on. At a 10, I'm not lovable. That's a dry love sponge. And underneath love. Well, I'm going to pause for a moment and ask you just a question. You keep your eyes closed, but I'm just going to ask you a question. If your love sponge was filled, and this is sort of a question nobody's ever asked you before, but just do your best with it, okay? If your love sponge was absolutely filled, you didn't feel all alone and all of these other things that emanated from the childhood beliefs that you bought. Would you have your various ailments? Would you have insomnia? Would you have these other things or not? What's your best estimate? No, I would not have them. Okay. Love cures everything. That's the whole idea. And the more we can get of it, the more the more relief we can have and so on. So there you are with your dry love sponge. Unseen therapist is right there with you. 
And she has a full love sponge, always does. She does, It's so full, it just radiates. And the more you, she radiates, the more it fills up, the more love there is, and so on. That's the nature of love. The more you give, the more you have. Okay. Love is best when shared. In fact, love is a form of sharing. So there she is next to you, and now you're open, just like you were a little bit ago, going through the cloud when she was saying, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Absolutely, I love you. She's there now saying it again. And every time she says, I love you, your love sponge starts to fill up. And I'm going to help it out a little bit, okay? I love you. Here comes the more love for the love sponge. I love you. Oh, I cherish the ground you walk on, Dee Dee. I love you. And the more I love you and the more this love sponge fills up, the more you're going to be able to radiate this love, even to your parents and people around you. I love you. I love you. Ah. Oh. This is not, Dee Dee, so you know, a romantic kind of love. That's a substitute for the real love. Right. This is... I love you from the deepest part. This is I love you for you. I love you. I love you. Oh, look at you. I love you. Now continue at yourself until you've gotten to the point where your love sponge is as full as you can make it. Until you've gone as far as you can go. And then, and then just say, say, okay, and we'll proceed from there. Okay. All right, good. Does that feel a uh, feel improved or not? I think it feels the same. The same as what? The same improvement as I had before. Okay. When you, All right. when you first said I I can't say it. I I got I got any more. It feels All right. it feels like it stayed okay. there. All right. All right, close your eyes. Close your eyes. And now with your love sponge, more filled than it used to be, there's your parents. And we're not ever going to excuse the behavior, the ignoring behavior and so on. And some of the other things your father may have done, which we haven't discussed here in this session, but like the diaper incidents and that you and I know about. You look at them, the dry love sponge, and now the nice thing about the love sponge is as it fills up, we can radiate it. It fills up and it, there's more. It just overflows. And so in your imagination, allow it to your love sponge to overflow and share it with your parents. And watch in your imagination as the love sponge begins to fill up. Whether or not you feel it, whether or not there's warm fuzzies or all this other kind of stuff, in your imagination, allow it to happen with unseen therapist's help. Okay, Just allow it to happen. Their love's supposed to fill up. And as that happens, say to them, I love you. I love you. See, they may ne never have heard that themselves in a meaningful way. I love you. And see, when you when you share love that way, you gain more of it yourself. I love you. I love you. And in your imagination, watch their posture soften. Watch the expression on their face soften. Become more loving. Watch the look in their eyes soften and become more loving as you say i love you even though you may not you may even have some resentment left over and things like that oh that's always possible we're trying to be go beyond that at the core they've never had much love maybe none at all i love you that's what you say i love you just keep doing that until you've gone as far as you think you can go and just Open your eyes and go talk.
Okay. Were you able to follow? Were you able to follow along? Okay. Yes. Yes. It seemed like when when we first started, seeing my parents was a very um, standing there. It was a very loving feeling. It, it wasn't. A, a, <clears throat> it was happy to see them, and it seemed very peaceful and loving. And then as it progressed, it kind of went backwards a little bit. Like I had this, I, I hesitate to, to even say it cause I don't want it to be true, <laughs> but uh -huh. it's like, okay, just stay there. Just stay where I was, just stay where I was. Well, wait, wait, I didn't, I, wait, I'm sorry. I didn't hear the words. Well, when I, when you first did it, it was a great thing. Like I saw my parents standing there and it was, a, it felt, loving and I was happy to see them and I didn't have any any bad or anger or anything like that but the longer I stayed there my mom my mom actually had evil eyes and then I was trying to like I trying to like wipe them away like oh no 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 and then I tried to bring back the loving feeling and it never got back to as good as it was it was almost that same thing as getting so close and having it which I've done many times in my life, having having that feeling, and then that wall, that sabotage, whatever that is. That nope, you're not going there. You're not going to be happy. Okay. But so you know, but it is what it is, right? I'd right, like it to right. be something else, but it is what it is. All right. How's the dizziness? Um, dizziness is like a two. All right. The wall may still be there, but you've gone from an eight to a two as a result of what we've done. Did I miss the it? The dizziness, yes. Yeah, okay, all right. Um, so Gary, let me ask you something. So if, if the dizziness, if, if and when it comes back, do I, is it something where I need to, need to really pay attention? What am I feeling right now? that that came on and do I do a session when I feel it at the time? Yes, I would do a session when you feel it at the time. Yes. Um, but more foundational to that, I think, is because I've recorded this and I'm going to send you a copy of the recording. You can go back to this session that we've been doing. Okay. And repeat them and repeat and repeat it over and over and over again. Because each time you do it, and I did it in a way to do that, okay? Uh, uh, each time you do it, it's likely to bring up other things. It's likely to take you to a, a, another level still. Because see, when you first come into this, you come into it with, with a sort of built-in resistance. Everybody would. Some kind of resistance. You get the wall, if you will, okay? But then we, we go through it. And, well, the wall becomes a cloud. We walk through the cloud, but the wall comes back. So the wall's still there, okay? But you've gotten a lot of other things going on. You really love the idea of I love you, and you bought it for yourself, yes? <laughs> yeah, yes. Okay. There were some good things happening along. So when you repeat it, and you repeat it, and you repeat it, it will sink, hopefully, deeper and deeper and deeper. And unseen therapist, you need to have a paper and pencil with you when you do it, is likely to say, ah, you need to look at this specific event. Ah, remember that. Ah, here's another one. And start writing these things down. And then, you know, the other tools you're learning in our, in our high-end optimal EFT course on specific events and so on, you can start cleaning up and cleaning up and cleaning up. Our purpose here was to to do something to try to kick the center out of this, I'm all alone, I'm not lovable yes. issue. So you know how when we did this, we um, we you had said we're not gonna we're not gonna put specific issues on the table. Yeah. So when I repeat this, when I play it back, do I start out before I start listening to you, write down what the specific issues are and just by writing them down? the unseen therapist will know this is part of my part of that. How does that work? Well, that could happen. Yes. Could 
happen. And so write them down. But the way I was thinking of that is as you go through this, you will you will likely get notions from unseen therapy. Oh, this specific event. Okay. Oh, you know, somebody said something and so on. So, oh, you did something and you feel guilty about that. Look at that one. Look at that one. That kind of thing. Okay. Okay. And so you likely have a list of those things and then bring in unseen therapists. Those typically are specific events. Bring in unseen therapist on those. Cleans up more, cleans up more, cleans up more. And is it My, overload if I put the physical issues in there too? Is that just overload? Is that too much? No, you can put them in there, the, but the chances are, see, those physical issues have a cause, okay? Oh, I, and I that, see. And that cause is emotional, and so you... I know what you're saying. It yeah. seems like you want to aim at this the physical symptom because that's what's bothering you, but yeah. better to aim at the cause. Okay. Yeah, I get and, it. And, and so we go, How how's the dizziness now? Is it still a two? It's, t it's a two, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Um, okay. Uh, let, let me let me do a little more testing. Okay. Is your anxiety still at a zero? Yes. Okay. Um, your heart palpitations still normal? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to have you say some sentences for me and tell me what, how true they feel on a zero to 10. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not good enough. Zero to 10. I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. Um, it's a zero. All right. I don't have any emotional reaction to it. All right. I'm not lovable. I'm not lovable. It's a zero. All right. Well, you were eight on the first and 10 on the second one to begin with, just so you know. Okay. I'm all alone and nobody cares. I'm all alone and nobody cares. It sounds like I'm just saying it. Like it's, it doesn't have any emotional re impact at all. Okay. All right. Now, all that is good. All that is really good. But one thing that's really, 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 really important to understand is we never, ever, ever want to be fooled by a temporary result, okay? So what we just did could be a temporary result. I don't think so. I think we did something that's going to last. I, I, that's my own view. But we don't know that. We don't know that until you test again. We need the test of time, okay? So tomorrow morning when you wake up, Take those same sentences. I'm not lovable, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Still, see if you're still zero or if there's some intensity, some truth to them. Okay. If so, that tells you there's more to work on, et cetera. Okay. Um, so you always want to test, 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 test. So tomorrow morning, go through the whole thing and test. And when you get this recording, which will, you will get within the hour likely. Okay. Um, Go ahead and replay it. You can plug other stuff in if you want to. You know, it's, it could be a very flexible thing for you. But I would keep at it. I would keep at it because you want to you want to kick as much of the center out of this as you possibly can. And this recording will help you. Okay. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. I mean, I'm All right. hopeful. I'm hopeful. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, the whole purpose here was to get a good start. You've got a lot of stuff going on. So, but if you can get a good right. start, great. Then you can launch off it and get more and more freedom. That's the point. Yeah, it was just, it was, you know, <clears throat> getting stuck. Being, I just had so much stuff. I overwhelmed myself to move forward. I didn't know where to start. Yeah. Okay. I, I just, I needed, uh, thank you, Gary, because I needed like a starting point. You know, even though I read, I read it, I was going through step by step, but it was so much, it just became like a snowball, you know, I just needed, I just needed to be pushed a little bit, you know, and um, so it was really good. It wasn't as scary as I thought it was going to be. Oh, okay. Well, unseen therapist isn't really a very scary, scary, scary person, you know, so. <laughs> All right.
Okay, so anything more you want to go over before we uh, draw the curtain? Um, no, I, I don't think so. I really enjoy talking to you. I could talk to you for hours. <laughs> it's it's okay. great. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, we'll close this up now. So. Okay. Yeah. Thanks so much, Gary. And thanks everybody for listening in. I hope you hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next I'll see time. You next. Bye bye.